So welcome to an episode of Electronic Cafe Celebrates. And I know Mark's particularly happy about this one because it's with one of his favourite bands. It's about Duran Duran and the release of Seven and the Ragged Tiger. It was the third album by the boys. Um, they kind of wanted a real change in direction from the previous studio album, Rio, which again, as we know from when we talked about that lot, about last year, celebrating that, that was an incredible piece of work. This Seven and the Ragged Tiger is a synth pop and dance driven record and it's got a much more synth textured based emphasis. Um, the lyrics are ambiguous and cover a wide variety of topics. Simon and Bond described the album as an adventure story about a little commando team, but the title itself refers to the five band members and their two managers. So the Seven and then Ragged Tiger meaning success. By the start of 83, you know, the boys um, had established themselves without doubt as one of the biggest bands in the world. They're enjoying massive commercial success following the release of Rio, but they got some received hate from the press and their musical peers. It's really weird, isn't it? It's like when someone comes up with something different, the natural reaction is to just be aggressive towards it, um, which I find bizarre, you know. Um, and, and But, you know, in the words of biographer Steve Manners, they were touted by the press as silly playboys living absurdly lavish lifestyles, imprisoned by the screams of even sillier teenage girls, and apparently hated by almost everyone else. I'm sorry, but those journalists were talking absolute bollocks, because I loved them then, so did my mates. We weren't screaming girls, we're all fairly intelligent people. So, sorry, those music journalists that said that, you were wrong. They're a great band. They still are, by the way, and their probably careers have been far longer than most of those journeys that panned them. Before Seven and the Ragged Tiger, Duran Duran released a non-album standalone single, Is There Something I Should Know, which was a departure from the sound of the Rio album, and it became the band's first UK number one. I see the signs of the looks of the pictures They give your game away, yeah. There's a dream that's dream As Tactiles, the album was recorded in France, the Caribbean and Australia and was produced by Alex Sadkin not long after finishing the Thompson Twins album Quick Step and Sidekick. And he went on to produce the utterly fantastic Duran spin-off Arcadia album in 1985. Initially, the band struggled during recording through a combination of burnout, lack of ideas and their lifestyles. The album contains the singles Union of the Snake, The Reflex and the hugely underrated New Moon on Monday. Famously, it was the Nile Rodgers remix of The Reflex that became the huge hit, with Nile Rodgers making it more dance orientated with the famous Fleck 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 sample. The band received much backlash from the EMI executives over this song, but it went on to become the band's first US number one and their second UK number one. What do executives know, eh? I saw the Seven and the Ragged Tiger tour at Wembley Arena at the end of December 1983. And by the time the next studio album, Notorious, came out, the band had done Live Aid and both the Arcadia and the Power Station albums and Roger and Andy had now left the band. So, you know, for me, absolutely great band, still surviving, but that album is a great piece of work as well. So if you haven't heard it, check it out. Love Seven and the Ragged Tiger, really good album. Uh, celebrate it, the fact that it's 40 years old and still sounding bloody good.
as I chase things. 